Welcome back to JBX Energy Market Weekly Updates. The supply side factors had been the main driver of oil price fluctuations last week, rising geopolitical tensions in Europe, the possibility of further OPEC production cuts, as well as a pullback in the U.S. dollar continued to lend support as crude oil futures had clawed back some early losses. Focus now switches to OPEC Plus meeting, with most traders expecting some form of cut. Russia and Saudi Arabia said to be considering a reduction of around one million barrels per day. But any headline like cut were full shot. In reality, with the group currently missing production quotas by around 3.4 million barrels per day, and this will be followed by Saudi November official selling prices, which, based on the current market structure, the key first month and third months Dubai cash spread monitored by Saudi Ramco and other Middle East national oil companies, averaged five dollar and thirty six cents in September compared to four dollar and eighty nine cents in August, flagging a small increase in official selling prices for November loading barrels for Asian customers. As for the interregional spread, Asia Cash November Brent averaged ninety-one dollar and fifteen cents over the month, down six point seven percent from the October average of ninety-seven dollar seventy cents a barrel. While the Brent Dubai Cash spread crunched an average of twenty-four cents a barrel compared to the previous contract average of one dollar and twelve cents a barrel. The spread has flipped between positive and negative through the month, leaving the narrow spread in Dubai cash spread since the height of the pandemic, when Brent prices collapsed in the second quarter of 2020. The Brent in Dubai crunch was seen more as a symptom of Brent weakness, with North Sea market rates facing steep competition from WTI Midland and West African barrels. The suspected sabotage of Nord Stream pipeline was seen as potentially heightening European energy security. Meanwhile, the European Commission on Wednesday set out its proposal for an eighth package of sanctions against Russia, including the ban on European companies from shipping Russian oil to third countries above an internationally set price cap. The suspected sabotage of the Nord Stream pipeline was seen as potentially heightening European energy security. Meanwhile, the European Commission on Wednesday set out its proposal for an eighth package of sanctions against Russia, including a ban on European companies from shipping Russian oil to third countries above an internationally set price cap. Or bids within a certain timeline. That limit would be above the marginal production cost of Russian oil, but below market prices. It is likely to be close to the price being paid today for Russian oil in Asia, or around 30 percent below Brent, roughly six dollar a barrel. The United States hopes the price cap will be agreed upon at least a month before the EU sanctions kick in on December the fifth and February the fifth for crude and products, respectively. A lot rests on the maritime insurance market to monitor Russia's seagoing oil and enforce the cap. About 95% of the global oil tanker fleet is covered by shipping insurers in G7 countries. However, Russia has already established an alternative reinsurance company for its maritime fleet, which China and India have accepted. On the other hand, Russia's ability to sidestep the price cap by using domestic or non-G7 regulated shipping and tanker insurers from countries not imposing the price cap is seen limited due to the shortage of spare tanker capacity. Besides crude and oil products, a total of 15 EU member states have called on the European Commission to present a proposal for a price cap on oil gas transactions, given the worsening European energy crisis. It remains unclear whether the European Commission is considering a cap on the price of imported gas or on the wholesale price of gas, or whether a more general retail price cap could be considered. Some in industry have warned also that any cap on the price of European gas could lead to an increase in consumption at a time when the EU is striving to cut gas demand. The global LNG market, in particular, remains very competitive, with Asia also looking to secure cargoes over the winter. On the oil product market, European diesel crack spread climbed as natural gas price soared and supply outlook tightened. Russia's seaborne export fell six percent to new post-Ukraine war low in the first half of September, according to Kepler. As Russia volumes fall ahead of sanctions, growing United States imports mean that U.S. is set to become Europe's biggest supplier in oil in the coming month. Latest weekly data from the EIA showed that U.S. supply is tightening as seasonal maintenance gets underway, refining output hitting a four-month low. Sources that China may extend the duration of the proposed volume of 15 million tons into next year to cushion its impact on global markets and avoid a price crash. The proposed volume would mean a 63 percent jump from the 24 million tons released so far for 2022. It's too large to be practical and risk crashing refiners' margins. Okay, that's all we have for this week. Welcome back next week.